the law should always take into account someone's popularity. I think that's, that's oh, I mean, what, what's happened to our country? For, it's as though you can't even commit financial fraud anymore. You can't, you can't inflate the value of your properties uh, when you need a loan and then deflate it uh, with taxes. I mean, uh, the next thing you know, they're gonna send you to jail instead of your lawyer and your accountant and your campaign manager and everyone else uh, ar around you. It's, no, to, the idea that someone may face accountability uh, who's that rich and powerful is outrageous. <laughs> this is why John Stewart is one of the greats. I'm glad he's back. The reason why Donald Trump became popular in the first place and the reason why these populist movements is that the citizenry have become fed up with the lack of accountability for those in power. We have no accountability in our financial systems. We have no accountability for the bankers. I mean, our uh, Congress trades stocks with information they get making laws and they do it to great success and they won't stop it because they're the ones in charge of making the law about it. And instead of bringing accountability to the rampant corruption that is uh, uh, surrounds our, our government and our financial systems, the Supreme Court just changed the definition of corruption. He's right. That's 100% accurate. He might never be held accountable. And what makes this even more maddening is people now have this absurd perception of Trump being a good a businessman. Well, the choice now yeah. is the Clear. chaos and destruction of Joe Biden or the peace and prosperity and she of Donald was really Trump. The this is exactly what I'm talking about. Kayleigh McEnany just labeled Trump's presidency as peaceful and prosperous? I, I don't remember it as peaceful. We begin tonight with a nation already on edge in the coronavirus pandemic as protests turn violent across America. We saw our third trading halt in just six sessions right at the open, a 15-minute halt with the S&P down 7%. And we're coming on the air with breaking news, the first right public remarks from President one. Trump following the U.S. military strike that killed Iran's top general. And going back to the notion that he's a good businessman, would a good businessman be like a lapdog of Russian billionaires? Russian oligarchs bought huge portions of Trump properties, mm -hmm. okay? especially when he was down and out and it helped him a lot. So he's still thinking about his own money. So one of our viewer members wrote in like, wait, how if the Russian ruble is not worth anything anymore, which currently that's the state of affairs, how's Trump gonna get paid on some of those properties? So Trump is probably worried about his own finances. You think that guy's strong? He's pathetically weak and he's at his weakest when talking about Russia and Putin. Uh, that's where he uh, betrays himself and you know he's not an alpha. The minute he's scared, you know, whether it was a podium with somebody, uh, he thought somebody was gonna rush the stage and he's like, ah! No, it's not. And then the or, eagle in his in his office. Or protesters outside of the White House. Oh, and he goes and hides in a bunker. Right, bunker boy. And when it comes to Putin, he, oh, like this, right? No, but it's, he's a strong man, everyone, no. everyone knows this. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, it, but the thing is that this is where I get so frustrated at the Democrats because they don't fight back effectively. So, a lot of Democrats and independents still think that Trump is strong. What have you done? You've had six years to prove, and you have all the evidence in the world that the man is a weakling, an insecure, thin skinned weakling. So, at best, his business success is questionable, pointing to bankruptcies, legal issues, skepticism about the true extent of his wealth. But people still view him as a business genius. I, I actually, I went through this with Michael Cohen, was his lawyer and was saying like, no, he actually is worth a billion dollars. But these people think that he's like a multi-billion, they're like, you know, worthy of Elon Musk. Not that I like Elon Musk either. Not only that, not only do they think he's like a billionaire like 20 times over and he's a good businessman, they also think he won the 2020 election. On the, on the news, when I was watching the, the boats come in, he was winning, 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 winning. All of a sudden, those those things changed drastically. I, I really think it was a setup. I really do. I don't think he lost. I, I am one of the people that believe he did win. Um, there was a lot of uh, things going on that were kind of fishy to me on the last election. Um, so, like, could you be specific a little bit about that? The, what, what affected your opinion on that? 
Well, we I, I saw a lot of a lot of things on on social media, um, people um, harvesting ballots, voting multiple times, a list of rosters of people that um, were deceased still on the on the roster voting. Um, a lot of stuff came out on, on the, that was not on the media, but was a lot circling a lot of the um, the 2,000 mules that that show. I 100% I, I believe what, what, what was said on it. My president, the one who won. And, and, but he won and then he lost. So if he runs... He didn't lose. He didn't lose? No, not at all. So tell me about that. I thought Joe Biden's president. Well, he's in the White House, but he's not the real president. He's not the one uh, doing... Um, I mean, to me, my president is still Trump. Biden? No. But he's the one who commands the military and makes the decisions and the foreign policy. No, so a lot of people behind him that is doing the decision for him. That man is a sleepy one. He's really he's not he's not commanding at all. Where did you hear that? Like, how do you know that? <laughs> it, 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 yeah, like common sense. And um, I don't know. I don't believe anything that's going on. It is a weird thing. I feel like the religious right sort of mythologizes the people that they think are going to sack the Supreme Court and get rid of abortion. If you've been around long enough and been through, like W, a lot of the things that they mythologized about George W. Bush, they mythologize about Donald Trump. You know, like there's that meme of like, they're after you, I'm just in the way. That meme has been recycled from when George W. Bush was president. That, you know, that, that would be like that, you know, the, like the emails that are forwarded through 20 people and like your grandmother forwards them to you and it's like this conservative thing. Those things, that was forwarded to me by older members of my family when George W. Bush was president and it's being circulated today with Trump. They, they mythologize people and then they just recycle the same, you know, deep state nonsense, you know, and suddenly like this you know, person who has, you know, is incredibly flawed is now this, you know, symbol of virtue. I don't get it. And the funny thing is, is when they want to clap on progressives, they're like, well, oh yeah, when was the last, you know, Biden rally you've been to? We're like, dude, we don't worship our leaders like this. I mean, we could maybe, but we're like, we don't even, we don't like Biden. Like, what are you talking about? We like him when we, he deserves it. And you like him for a day when he, you know, cancels student loan debt or something. Not, you know, not just, you know, blindly all the time. So, oh boy.